Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's look at how a Taylor series can help us to evaluate an integral. Let's start with the integral of e to the x squared. Now, we can't find an antiderivative of this but we can use Taylor series to help. Think about the Taylor series for e to the x. And we plug in for x, x squared, the effect of which is just to give us that. Now we integrate and we can do this term by term. Okay. So we have zero to one, x to the two n, n factorial dx. All right, take an antiderivative and we get um, x to the two n plus one all over two n plus one times um, n factorial. And we're going from zero to one, all right. So we took an antiderivative, now we're going to evaluate from zero to one, which at zero, that's just zero. So we just plug in one and we end up getting one over two n plus one n factorial. Now this is amazing. This is actually equal to that series. So we can approximate this by just taking, adding up terms in the series. Let's say that we wanted to just add so many terms up and see kind of how far we can be off. Well, what if we add three terms? So at zero, that would be, if you plug it in, you'll get one. If you plug in one, you'll get a third. And if you plug in two, this is n values, so n value of zero gives you one, n value of one gives you one third, n value of two would give you, um, let's see, be, that would be five times two, so 10, one tenth. Okay, so let's suppose we did the first three terms. How far off are we from the actual? Maybe we wanna add more, but let's see how far we are for, from the actual. See, we can just use remainder estimate tests. In this particular case, since this right here, we could do this in a couple of different ways. Um, one, we could use some kind, something like um, an integral type remainder test. Um, well, especially since we took it antiderivative of this and we got this, we don't necessarily know what. Um, function yeah okay so we took so right i mean this is not a taylor series for one so this is just a regular series so we have our options for tests we could either do um, alternating series remainder tests which we're not going to do since this is not alternating or we can do an integral um, bounding for the remainder and that's the one we're going to choose especially since all these terms are positive. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we're gonna be starting to add when n is three. So to take care of that bound in an integral, we go all the way back to just one more before three, which is two. And what do we integrate? We integrate this with x plugged in, except notice there's an x factorial. That doesn't really work very well as a nice continuous function that you can integrate and work with in this situation. So we're going to do some kind of a comparison. In fact, um, using the idea that we're integrating from two to infinity, we'll think that n factorial is always bigger than two to the n in that interval as long as, um, as, long as n is uh, between two and infinity going up. So using that idea, then we can actually, if we reciprocate, this inequality reverses. So naturally, the remainder 
will still be less than this. It'll be a bigger upper bound than what we actually need, but that's okay. So we get 2n plus 1 and then 2 to the n, except maybe we should use x's. Okay. Maybe that's an x. And maybe that's an x right there. OK. Now, in general, I mean, we could, we could try to work with this, but the integration might be a little bit more challenging, um, if not impossible. So what we're going to do is maybe do another comparison, get something bigger than this, which I mean, we'll get something bigger than this if we just simply um, make the denominator smaller, even by taking out this factor. So we could even do this. And remember, there's a dx, uh, 2 to infinity, and then we have 1 over 2x dx. So we just integrate this. OK, so this is um, 2 to the negative x, and it's antiderivative is um okay so we have two to the negative x and its antiderivative is um two negative two to the negative x all over uh natural log of two and um and then we evaluate this from two to infinity remember the infinity is like a limit so now as you go here this part will be zero so really it's only subtracting off what it is when we plug in a two. So when we plug in a two, we're gonna get, um, we're gonna get negative, um, right, okay. So we're gonna, so when we plug in a two, um, we're gonna get negative two to the negative two all over natural log two. Okay, all over natural log of two. So, oh, but then we have a, we're going to be minusing that. So the error is going to be positive. It looks like, I mean, and this is even um, less than a fourth. Okay. So we're going to be less than a fourth off from the actual. Now you can play with this a little bit, realizing where this two came from. It kind of came from where we were starting right here, which is where we were ending. So if we did more terms, we could even just even kind of replace this this two with something else um, and this natural log as well. And in general, we know that at least an upper bound um, would be something like um, the double negatives will cancel, something like n to the negative n all over natural log of n, where n is like the last guy that we're adding, but that's how far off we will be. So we could plug this in our calculator a few times and try to figure out what n should be in order to make it small enough, like how many terms do we need to add? This would actually tell us. Um, we just pick an n that would give us something less than something like 0.01 or something, say, and we would be able to figure it out just by plugging and checking. Thanks for watching.